I wanted to talk with my sister Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth. Thanks for talking to me. Of course. Uh, I've been really excited to talk to you. And I appreciate you uh, being willing to be a guinea pig here on my first <laughs> attempt to do this. I, I've really wanted to talk to people for a while. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Maybe I can talk to uh, our, our brother-in-law, Kelly, and maybe some other interesting loved ones <laughs> in the future. Right. And I don't, and you know, it's possible that the memories I have are from when I was in the womb. I don't know the timing of them. Yeah. So when I was really little, I don't know how old. I real I had always had this memory and I remember telling someone once about it. Okay, so the memories that I had were I remember being in the garage and everybody getting out of the car and um oh, man, now I'm how slippery my memories are trying to say it, it's suddenly making it gone, but everyone was getting out of the car and you had gotten back from a trip from Mexico trip to Mexico. Um, and I, th I don't know when I realized I hadn't been born when you took that trip to Mexico, that it was that if I was really remembering it, I hadn't been there. I wasn't there for that. And it was, it's very brief. I'm just in the garage. Everyone's getting out of the car. I know that everyone's just back from a trip to Mexico. So that's the first one. And, and it was very, so it's not like a vivid dream, but it was very consistent, not dream, sorry, memory. It was very consistent. I remembered it. I remembered being there. Remember when we all went to Mexico and, and then someone's like, well, you weren't you weren't born yet. And I was like, and they, of course, because of our beliefs, our religious beliefs at the time, it, they were like, they didn't believe me, right? They were like, you must have heard about it, or you must have, but I'm like, I didn't see any reason why I would remember being in the garage while people got out of the car after a trip. Like, I can remember if people had told me about the trip, which as far as I know, they never did. I don't know anything about this trip to Mexico. Um, so that that's the extent of it. This is These are not like big, exciting things. The other one is I remember standing on the back porch and dad walked out of the, um, out of the house from the door from the laundry room uh, out toward me and he had a beard. And I was never alive when he had a beard. I didn't know that, but when I told someone about it, they were like, or at some point I must have just heard the years when he had a beard. And I was like, wait, I, I remember him with a beard. I remember him walking out of the back door, like very clear memory, walking out of the back door toward me with a beard. Um, and that's as, that's as far as that one goes. So these are not like earth shattering, they aren't life changing, but I do remember having to do a lot of like adjusting and trying to figure out that doesn't fit in with what I believe. 
Like I couldn't have, well, I mean, it kind of did because we believed in life before death, but it didn't fit in with my version of our religious beliefs, which was like, I wasn't a Saturday's warrior kind of person. I was a, <laughs> but that's Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it was like, hmm, doesn't fit. Yeah. And whoever I told about these memories also was like, no, that couldn't have happened. Right. Like, so I, I was just like, okay, well, I don't know, but I, but I do know that I always was kind of like, but I remember that. You know, so it wasn't until later when I was like, I can believe anything I want. And I know that was true. I know I really believe I know I really remembered those things that happened before I could have remembered them because I wasn't born yet. And maybe I was in the womb when you guys went to Mexico. I don't think dad had a beard while I was in the womb. I think the beard was much earlier than that. Yeah. Right. Well, yes, and I've thought of that, and I thought, what if he didn't even have a beard in that house? Could I have been, did I just make it up? Or am I thinking it was our house because that's the house I remember, but it was some other house and he was walking out the door under a, patio you know what I mean and my memory of being a child is not that great but I do know that at some point I had to be like wait they're telling me I couldn't be remembering these things and I couldn't remember something from before I was born so I must just be and I, I wasn't willing to go to the place where I'm just wrong right because I'm, I'm like no I I've always remembered this. Like these are memories that have been there for a long time. And um, so I, I, I mean, I guess it's just one of those things that I just kind of sat with where I'm like, and, and even now where I'm like, you know, I going back and be able to say, okay, little girl, I believe you. I believe that you remember those things. For me, it's not like a huge, oh, because of this, I know that there that reincarnation is real or because of this, I know whatever. There's no takeaway from this, except that I think, oh, this is one small evidence that maybe there's more than just this life to my existence. And, and really it's, it's as, it's as minor as that. Like really there's no like, oh, now I know or whatever. It's just, Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder. Yeah. The veil? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're saying how did the teachings of the veil that I learned affect this experience and how I was able to accept it or not accept it as a kid? Yeah, or others. And you're thinking maybe that particular teaching had an, uh, a significance here. 
that I couldn't remember something from before I was born. Right. Right. So like, cause we're taught that we lived in heaven with God, then we're born and there's a veil that's put so that we can't remember life before we were born so that we have to live by faith and we learn to live by faith. We can't see that God's there. We have to learn to develop our faith. Um, and it was kind of like, well, in my memories, I, I, this is, I think I remember, I felt like a little girl in the memories, which doesn't fit into all sorts of anything that I can think of, right? Right. And even if I believe in reincarnation, I would think that any time in between lives, I would exist as a, as an adult. Who knows? I mean, that's the way that I would think, oh yeah, that's how it would work. And suddenly I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why I would, I remember, I felt like a member of the family, a child in the family when I had those memories. That was my dad. These are my siblings and my parents getting home from a trip. So that doesn't fit in with, because we believed we were adults before we came here. Our spirits were adults. Then we came and got a baby body that an adult spirit lived in. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. And, you know, now that as I'm talking about it, I think maybe it was just a bunch of fun. Maybe I just believed it. But I made it up or whatever. But I do remember as a kid thinking, no, this is real. And I've remembered this for a long time. I think we might have been talking about like earliest memories when I brought him up. And someone was like, well, no, you weren't there. You weren't there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Five, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more of an, oh, yeah, I remember that. And just kind of a, hmm, I wonder what that, you know, I just wonder, what does that mean? Is that, was that real? Is that, you know, if it's real, what did it mean? What, what implications does it have, if any? Um, yeah, it was just more of a little bit of a gee whiz, huh? That happened. I have, I mean, I've done like inner child work, but I don't, and it's possible that this memory made that more real and more like, yeah, I could do that. I don't know why it would, it's not totally connected, but um, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Love you too, we'll see ya. Bye.